Hallelujah, praise the name of Jesus Christ. Good morning, brothers and sisters, friends and family. It's good to be here again sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with you. Welcome to our Sunday uh, service. It's good to be here again. My name is Pastor Femi Alara of Living in the World International Church, a place where we preach Christ undiluted and we receive the keys to fulfill our destinies and our potentials. And I pray that you shall fulfill your destiny in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, if you're joining us for the very first time, we'll be looking at a series of teaching throughout the month of August. And we'll be looking at the total recovery package that God has in store for us. It's so important that we know everything that we have lost to the enemy so we can go after it. Many of us are yet to be motivated to fight against the enemy or go after the spoils of war because we simply don't know what God has made ready for us. I uh, remember the story of Jesse Duplantis. Uh, Jesse Duplantis shared a story, uh, one of his visions. He said he went to heaven and was walking on the street of gold and um, he finally came to a warehouse where his name was on top of the warehouse. And then um, he asked the Lord whether or not, the Lord, the Lord asked him whether or not he would like to see what's inside of the warehouse. He said yes. So he opened the door and then he could see treasures as far as his eyes could see, as wide as his eyes could see, as high and, and so on and so forth. And then he was so excited. And suddenly his eye caught a corner that was empty and he asked the Lord, he said, what is in that corner? And why is that corner empty? He said, that's how much you have asked for out of the order that I've provided for you. In the books of Genesis, we read the story of the fall of man, Genesis chapter 3. And during the fall of man, man lost the dominion. He lost the keys that he, uses, that he had as authority over the earth. Because if you read God's blueprint for man, according to Genesis chapter 1, you read 26 and 28, the Bible says that man was made to rule over the earth. Man was made to have dominion over the seas, over the water. So what happened in the process? Now tonight, uh, this morning, it's time to recover all that we have lost. So our topic this morning is titled, The Keys of the Kingdom. And I'm hoping that God will release that key back onto you this day in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now shall we pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God of heaven, we want to thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy throughout the month of August, a month of total recovery. Thank you for all that you have done for us in helping us, in preventing the virus from coming into our home. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. Father, we bless your holy name. We magnify you. We give you thanks and glory. Be thou exalted forevermore. Heavenly Father, this morning as we sit at your feet to hear your word, we ask that you please open our eyes of understanding and that you reveal your perfect counsel to us in the precious name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. That's our base scripture this morning. Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. And the Bible reads, it says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth, will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be lost in heaven. Uh, that scripture enough is enough to write a book. Because when we begin to talk about the keys of the kingdom, most adults have keys in their pocket. I mean, we have a bunch of keys. Keys to our house, keys to our apartment, or whatever we live, and then keys to our cars. And many of us, if not all of us, get very, very frustrated when we can't find our key. <laughs> I mean, that, that puts you on the edge because you don't know where you've left it. Is it safe? Is it secure? Will somebody be able to get access into your house? And so on and so forth. So when you have a key, uh, you need to look after it with utmost care and attention. I mean, in our day and age, we have keys that are actually, um, uh, key rings that actually have special devices that enables you to locate whatever your key is. I mean, you ring it. And some, it, it vibrates and tells you where your key has been left. Now, this is so important because as you will get frustrated and get annoyed or have anxiety when you lose the key to your house or to your car, you should begin to get uh, have frustration, anxiety when you lose the key to the kingdom of God. Now, if you pay attention to the scriptures from the books of Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, he said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and that whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. That means there's a supernatural world that governs a natural world. The keys of the kingdom of heaven governs the keys, governs the activities on earth. The keys of the kingdom of heaven governs the activities on earth. The keys of the kingdom of heaven governs the activities on earth. That is so important because Adam lost the key to the kingdom. 
As soon as he lost it, the devil has a few days. The Bible calls him the prince of this world. In other words, he has the authority over this world. He has the power over this world. He has a dominion over this world. That's why he can afflict, he can cause war, he can cause famine, he can cause things. But as Christians, Christ said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread over serpent and scorpion, over all the powers of the enemies. Nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. The Bible says in the books of James chapter 5 verse 17, James chapter 5 verse 17, it says, Elijah was a man of like passion like us. Elijah, a man of like passion. And he commanded the heavens to be shut for three and a half years. And it was so at the words of Elijah. I want to assure you something. You and I have a greater authority than Elijah did. How do I know that? We operate under a better covenant than he did. We have greater, better terms and conditions. We understand a bit better the spiritual. We actually have the power of God, which is the Holy Ghost, at work in our lives. The Bible says in Acts 10, 38, it said how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. So when the Holy Spirit is upon you, you have the power of God at work in your life. That means you can shut and no one will open. Jesus was giving a lot of imagery in the books of the Revelations. He was talking about him having the keys of life and death or keys of death and Hades in his hand. Revelation chapter 1 verse 18, uh, Revelation chapter 3 verse 7. I want you to understand the importance of a key. Just as you would have a problem or you will feel anxious when you don't have the key or to your house and your car in your hands, you should begin to feel anxious when you don't have the keys of the kingdom. When you are struggling to get beyond a particular point and the door is not opening, ask yourself, do I still have the key to open that door? A key is a simple, a small mechanism, but can open a great door. The vault where the bank stores all the money, all the gold, all the precious stones in is opened by a small key. Because that little key can open you to a great miracle, a great opportunity, a great mighty deliverance, and it can set you free from any dungeon that you're in. If you're still in captivity in life, then ask yourself, what key do you possess? What key is in your hand? What key is in your hand? Because a key gives you the right and the privilege to do certain things. A key gives you the right and the privilege to do certain things. Jesus speaking in John chapter 10 verse 1. John chapter 10 verse 1, the Bible says, Very, very truly I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. If you don't have the key, to enter through the door and you come in through the window then I will scream thief or I will call the police on you because you don't have the right to be in my house so pretty a key gives us the privilege and the right and the authority to be able to enter therein the activities on earth needs to be governed by children of God who possess the key the reason I quoted the books of Matthew, uh, James chapter 5, verse 17 earlier, talking about Elijah, a man of like passion, is simply because he had the key to shut the heavens, and the heaven was shut. And he called him a man of like passion. In other words, he, has, he was not special in any way, in any means. He was not special in any way, in any means. He was a man of like passion in the sense that he had the same feelings. He got angry. He feels hungry and he is a man that does goes to the toilet just like you do. But yet a man under an old testament dispensation, under our old covenant, could shut the heaven. How much more are we under the new covenant? That's why sometimes I ask the question, who is governing your heaven? Because if you are not the one governing the heaven, whoever is governing the heaven can decide to shut it and there won't be rain. In other words, there'll be scarcity, there'll be lack of abundance. And people will be starvation and people will go hungry. A man of like passion means that he's just an ordinary human being, just like you. There was nothing special about Elijah. But yet he could shut the heaven. How much worse who are called the sons of God? How much worse who can shut the heavens? At will. As Christians, we should understand the dominion and the authority that Christ has bestowed upon us. 
Behold, I give unto you power to tread over serpent and scorpion, over all the powers of the enemies. Nothing shall by enemies hurt you. It means that you have a certain level of dominion and power. What are you doing with the power he has given unto you? When he rose in the books of Matthew chapter 28 verse 18, he said, All power and all authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. So his name is the master key that we have. That's why he said, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. John 14, 12. He says in the books of Philippians 2, verse 9 to 11, he says that all, all knees must bow at the mention of his name. At the mention of the name of Jesus, all knees must bow. So his name is the master key that opens the door to a world of abundance, opportunity, prosperity, increase, deliverance. Name it under the heaven, the name of Jesus, which you and I have, have, have access to, is what gives us that dominion. You see, the key is what separates us from the world. The keys of the kingdom is what separates us from the world. In the olden days, what people do uh, or kings uh, have is a somewhere called a storehouse. The storehouse is where they keep all the treasures, the food stock, the armory and all that kind of thing. And um, the, key, the king will give somebody in the, among his subjects that he trusts, his treasurer, the key to the storehouse. So when he has the treasure, he has the, the key to the storehouse, what, what happens is that um, <laughs> he wears it around his neck like a jewelry. So that wherever he goes, everybody would know that he's a, he's a very highly placed man who is in favor with the king. And it must not be toyed with. If that is the case, then many of us need to examine our lives and find out whether we placed our key. Some people have gone to the house of prostitutes and they have left their key. They took off the key and the prostitute took the key and ran away. Some people's keys have been stolen in their dreams. Some people have been stolen. What I mean is prostitute, I'm not talking about physical human being. I'm talking about other gods. I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Maybe this will help to put my point in. Uh, there were two ladies in the church. One was praying and fasting and crying to God for help. And then, you know, nothing was coming forth. So he, he, she was frustrated. Then her friend, uh, who was supposed to be her friend, also going to the same church, said, oh, please. I can take you somewhere. They will help you there. Ah. He said, is there a church service? No, don't worry about the place. I will take you somewhere. They will help you. And then he got there. She, she got there on that, on, the, on that fateful day. They sat down and one man came out. When the man came out, ah, he looked at her, the one that's been frustrated and not gotten an answer to her prayer. He looked at her and said, ah, Hey, you have seven star, you have seven stars on your head. Give me some. The woman who ignorantly said, Oh, sure, Baba, please take some. <laughs> Whatever you want. At least let me get out of this situation. So Baba clapped his hand or did something to the head and collected about three or four <laughs> from the star that she carried in her head. So she, her situation was worse than when she first went in. What am I saying to you? What I'm saying to you is this. Sometimes you will go to help. It's a war unto them that trust in other gods. Sometimes we go to other gods, other places, uh, fortune tellers, um, star readers, readers, stargazers, and we think we are asking for help from them. But by the time we leave that place, they have stolen more from us than we have given them to them. Just because we are frustrated. That's what I mean by spiritual prostitution. I think I've shared my story before. Maybe I'll share it again. One day I was finishing a service, a prayer meeting service, um, many years ago. And suddenly, suddenly I turned around and I heard the Lord say to me, um, um, why are my, spirit, my people spiritually promiscuous? Spiritual promiscuity, I, the word spiritual and promiscuous does not fit in the same sentence. So my natural reaction was, Lord, I don't know. And then began to refer me to the books of Isaiah, that the Lord is your husband. 
Many of us are running after other gods. We are running after other uh, powers. And they are sucking us dry. That's what I mean by spiritual prostitution. And they have taken away what we ought to be using for our own destiny and building this kingdom on earth. <laughs> we, we are in a very dangerous dispensation. I can't emphasize that more than enough. And the world is going into spiritual, they're already in the spiritual anarchy. Everybody is almost anti-God. Government is anti-God. Local government is anti-God. Heads of state is anti-God. Anything that has to do with God must be removed from the system. Spiritual prostitution. Now, when a Christian begins to join them, he loses the key to be able to set himself free or lock the heavens over them. Paul and Silas were in prison, but they still had the key of praise that opened the door from within and they were able to get out. It was the praise of Paul and Silas, Acts chapter 16, I'm sure you know the story, that turned the key and shook the prison gate because they failed or they refused to compromise with the world. What am I saying to you? What key do you possess in your hand? Now, let me begin to move on. How do I access this key? Or what? how do I use this key? Number one, as much as I love my children, and I love them very dearly, I will not give them the key to the house or my car to let them drive. Because I don't want them to crash. Or I don't want them to be carelessly leave the door open. <laughs> and then or I'll give the key to a stranger because they're innocent and they're just okay oh you can have the key to my house why not and your goods and your, uh, your possessions will be left at the mercy of your enemies god forbid so one of the things that we must do as christians is that we must grow spiritually we must grow responsibly until we grow we are not permitted to have the key. God is not an irresponsible father that he will leave you or give you something that you're not ready for. Because you're likely to do more damage than good. You're likely to cause more trouble than actually do good to the society or your family or even yourself. So, it is important that you understand that the keys that you want to possess must be based on the responsibility and also the growth that you have. Also grow. I said this before and I'd like to say it again. Galatians chapter 4 verse 1. Galatians chapter 4 verse 1, the Bible says clearly. It says that a child, as long as he remains under, under means is under tutelage, is under... Um, uh, care is no different from a servant even though he be heir that's so important that's so so important even though you are an heir you must also grow to that responsible position for you to be able to access the key number two when you are given the key understand that is a privilege a privilege because authority has been bestowed upon you there was a story i read about a man a pilot that saved um his passengers from crashing and dying when the suddenly they had an issue almost uh, during landing some some time ago in new york and uh, he managed to safely land the plane away from the airport causing further damage. He landed the plane, I think, in a lake somewhere, and then he got the passenger. Nobody was injured, nobody was killed, nobody was serious, seriously had any issues. Everybody landed. In honor of his bravery and his skill and his you know, ability, the mayor decided to give him the key of the city as a result of that. In other words, he has given authority you will not give a thief authority over your city. Neither would you give him access to your bank where things are kept, valuable things are kept. 
So when you are talking about the authority, you must have, uh, when you're talking about the keys, you must have authority and you must also grow in responsibility as well understand that it's a privilege and recognition for your duty and service. So what are you doing? You want more, but what have you done with what he has given you recently? Oh Lord, bless me more, but what are you doing? What have you done with the blessing he has given unto you? Number three, Keys comes out of a personal revelation. Personal revelation. I read the books of Matthew many times. I've read the books of Matthew. I've read it this year at least once or twice over. Or more than that maybe. Um, just reading it through completely. Um, and suddenly some years ago, while I'm reading it, the Lord of God, the, the, the Spirit of God, oh, expanded the scripture onto me. And he spoke to me and said, read that scripture again. That was Matthew chapter 8, 28, verse 18. And it says, all power in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. By the end of the discussion, I realized something very crucial. If Jesus has all power in, in heaven and on earth, then what power does the devil have that he seems to be maltreating Christians, marginalizing them, stopping them in their tracks, stopping them from fulfilling their destiny. What power does he have? What power does he have? What authority does he have? This is where you begin to ask your questions. You must begin to have a personal and a private relationship with him. You often see Jesus pray 30 second prayers. Father, I thank you because I know you hear me always. But for the sake of these people, Lazarus, come forth. But you forgot to read about the scriptures where the Bible says a great while before dawn, he went to a solitary place and he prayed. Before he chose the 12 disciples, the Bible says he went away and prayed all night. When he finished, he came and said, okay, now guys, these are the 12 I want. There's a reason for that. He had a private relationship that showed in his public performance. Oftentimes I hear pastors and men of God who have no private relationship with God screaming at the top of their voice and expecting fire to fall. No private relationship, no public performance. The Bible says he that prays in secret, God will reward him openly. Now let me move on. Number four, the keys must be received by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Now, the keys of the kingdom is a supernatural one. It's an authority that is given to you by God. Primarily, it is shown in his word. Because the scriptures can never be broken. And the words of God is true. Yea and amen. It means that that keys have been given unto you. You must receive it by faith and begin to use it. No matter how many resources you have, if you do not use it, your situation will not change. It's important that you begin to use that key and activate it. And the way to do that is begin to speak his word. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. Begin to speak the word. Begin to speak the word. Begin to say something. Insert that key spiritually in prayers and see it manifest physically in your life. That's why it must be applied by faith. At all times. In all situations. Begin to decree. Because you have the authority. A beggar should. Um, a prince should not be begging. When he knows he's a prince. A prince will only beg. When he knows. When he feels like he's a servant. You can read the books of Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 7. He said I've seen an evil under the heaven. Where princes are walking on foot. And beggars and servants are riding on horses. Begin to exercise and see yourself as a royal priesthood. Release the words of God through prayer today and the power of God will flow. The keys of the kingdom gives us authority spiritually and we begin to see it manifest. I'm sure you remember the base scripture from Matthew chapter 16 verse 19. Whatever you bind in heaven shall be bound on earth. So you bound first in heaven and the earth will obey you. 
Now, let me begin to close because I think our time is far spent. And we want to thank God for all that he has done today uh, throughout the month for us. What are the benefits? I won't say everything we've said. Number one, use the key of the kingdom to access God. You see, don't be too concerned about the treasures. Think about the manufacturer of the treasure more. The keys of the kingdom allows you to access the door. Many of us have shut the heavens over ourselves and unable to access God. When the military wants to take over in a city or in a town or in a country, one of the first things they do is take down the communication line. And once they have done that, they are able to successfully do a coup. Why? Because they know that once they have killed the soldiers, uh, killed the place and taken over certain key areas, that's what, that what will lead to the, the end of it. Use the key, one of the benefits of the key is also to be able to unlock doors and see life change. Some people are walking under a closed heaven and a brass ground. There have been no rain in their lives for a very long time. I mean, showers of blessings. They need the showers of blessing. And as Christians, we have the keys in our pocket or whatever we have left it. And then begin to go after them and begin to ask God to let the heavens be open over their children. Use the kingdom, the keys of the kingdom, to enter into opportunities that are bound. Everybody's screaming pandemic. Everybody's screaming COVID-19. But their opportunities are bound. In every conflict, in every challenge, always ask God to open the doors of opportunity for you. Lastly for the day, is that use the keys to set the captives free. There are many people in captivity all around you. Friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, under the dominion of Satan and his cohort. It's time to use the key to begin to set them free. Finally, every member of the body of Christ is entitled to the key of the kingdom. Every bona fide child of God, as I begin to close, is entitled to the keys of the kingdom. It is not a privilege reserved for a certain group of individuals, like men of God, women of God, apostles, bishops, pastors, and so on and so forth. The keys of the kingdom is for every member of the body of Christ. Your bona fide child, your born again. The keys of the kingdom is for you. And I close with the same scripture that I open with James 3 verse 17. Elijah was a man of like passion. In other words, there was nothing special about Elijah. He has the same challenges that you faced. As a matter of fact, if you read the books of 1 Kings chapter 19, it was the same Elijah that ran from Jezebel. He had fears, he were had the things, but it was the same Elijah that commanded the heavens to be locked. So don't look down on yourself. Don't ever feel dismay. Don't ever feel that you're not capable. You have more power than you can ever imagine. You have more authority than you can ever imagine. So from this day, Begin to exercise that power and authority that has been given to you. Because now you possess the keys of the kingdom. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now, I would like us to pray a few prayer points before we go. The first prayer point that I'd like us to pray is to say, Father, thank you for all that you did for us in the month of August. Every single blessing, every single testimony, every single promotion, every form of healing every form of protection let's thank the lord and say father we give you thanks in the mighty name of jesus christ shall we pray father my lord and my god i want to thank you for everything that you have done for us in the month of august for the blessings that we have received 
tangible, intangible, for victory over invisible and visible enemies. Thank you for the edge of protection. Thank you for delivering us and setting us free, for breaking the bondage of Satan and sin over our lives, for not allowing the enemy to prevail. Thank you, O Lord, my Father, because you have shown us mercy when we have not deserved it. Thank you, O Lord, my God, because you have blessed the works of our hand and increased us. Thank you, O Lord, my Father, because you have loved us even when we are unlovable. Thank you for the edge of protection now going out and coming in, the Lord's safety that we have not walked into the trap of the enemy. We give you glory and praise. We honor your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now let's give God and our uh, thanks again for this virus that's been going out around the world that God has been curtailing. I'm sure many of us are beginning to re return to the new norm. Um, if you drive on the road now, you still be stuck in traffic. A few months ago, that was not the case. Then the road was uh, was completely empty. Let's thank Him that God is beginning to drive away this evil virus called COVID-19, and God is healing people diversely shall we lift up our voice and give god thanks father in the mighty name of jesus christ lord god of heaven we give you thanks for your mighty hands that is delivering us from this virus of covid 19 for driving away evil from our presence for uh, keeping us safe and secure for the healings of the covid 19 virus in the life of your individuals and families oh lord we bless your holy name we we'll thank you for your faithfulness we give you glory and praise in jesus mighty name we have given thanks now, again, let's pray. We're going to use the keys of the kingdom now and say, Father, every door, good door of breakthrough opportunities that is yet to open unto me this month, that I'm to be able to gather and recover all. Father, by the authority in your name, I command it to be open in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Shall we pray? Father, in the precious name of Jesus, O Lord my God, I pray that every good door of opportunities and blessings, promotions, increase and multiplication, Father, that is yet to open unto me this month, I command it to be opened by the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, your name possesses all power in heaven and on earth. And by your name, we break every stronghold. I break down every stronghold of the enemy against my life, against my ministry, against my home, against my family, in the name of Jesus Christ. And I recover all that is due to me. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. One more prayer. And that is to decree into the month of September ahead of time and say, Father, the month of September will favor me. The month of September will be a month of increase and multiplication for me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord my God, I pray concerning the month of October, uh, September, Father, that it shall be a month of blessing. It shall be a month of increase and multiplication. It shall be a month of grace. It shall be a month of our power. It shall be a month of, O oh Lord, deliverance. It shall be a month, O oh Lord, my Father, that you shall visit me in a strange and unusual way. It's a month that you shall transform my life and change my story. It shall be a month, O oh Lord, my Father, that you shall move me forward in every direction, in every aspect of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, all my long-time prayers in this month of September, it shall be answered speedily. I will not walk into the trap of the enemy. I will not have road accident. I will not I will, whatever means of transportation I use. I will never be involved in accident. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, my household is preserved. My home is preserved in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Savior. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray final prayer as I bless you all. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God of heaven, I thank you for the life of all your children that's listening and watching us. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your edge of protection. Thank you for healing and deliverance. Thank you for never leaving them, never forsaking them. Thank you for all the recovery they have made this month. Lord, as we go forth, we go forth in your name. Father, let every blessing that we have received this month of August, Father, be utilized for your glory, and we shall use it, O Lord, throughout the rest of our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we will not fail, we will not fall, we will not falter. We will not die untimely to the glory and praise of your holy name. Thank you, Savior. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you all. Enjoy the rest of your day. And I look forward to seeing you tonight for the Bible study at 7 p.m. God bless you. Good day. Bye-bye.